Hey guys, I'm back with some more Quick Tools content. Um, I wanted to do a Nosferatu thing because I really like the director Robert Eggers and I saw that he might be doing one. And I just thought, you know, let me take that some kind of like Victorian time period. Let me put Anya Taylor-Joy and William Dafoe, do some sculpts of them and just make a little concept and then record it um, and kind of answer some of the comments that you guys have left and the things that you asked for in terms of seeing some photo modeling process. Uh, so I have that in this video but I'm starting out with just a little quick shape block out. This is kind of like the uh, thumbnail sketch, basically. And uh, I have had some people ask like what settings are you using and all those kinds of things. And I basically use the default settings all the time. Um, it's more about the Booleans, like using Alt to extrude, and maybe just change the size a little bit, change the, um, like the towards view, away from view, but I try to keep that simple because I just want to be drawing. I don't really want to like let me change a few settings and then draw, change a few settings and then draw. I find that really annoying and it kind of takes away from the purpose of Quick Tools, I feel like. So I'm more about just draw it in place and then move it using the, you know, the fact that we're in 3D, it's very easy to scale things and move them. So I do it that way. But obviously you can approach it however you want. You can use, we have, we have a ton of settings. You can mess with all of them, but I mostly don't. I just like to take advantage of the fact that, you know, you can just draw in 3D and just have your shape. And because of the lasso, it has that quality that I'm looking for. And that's really what I use it for. So I'm just, it's a very crude block out at this point. Obviously you spend a lot of time on it. I do show a little bit more refined version. I spent some more time on it, but it's really up to you. This is a nice little thing to do and then just paint over it. It's, e it's easy to paint over when it kind of looks bad and unfinished when it has like that, like it's not avatar quality, but it's pretty good. I, I just feel like you end up in this area where it's so hard to, like you put a brush stroke and it just looks so out of place and then you have to basically paint over the whole thing and then do just photo bash on top and why did you do the 3D? You know, so I'm thinking about all that kind of stuff and that's the whole point with this these tools is, um, to do something that's a little more low poly, a little more crude and more sketchy so that you don't have to deal with those issues. So I'm just going back and forth between quick shape and you know, quick deform for mirror or lattice um, using alt and subtract and separate to create new uh, objects and extrusions. I'll switch between quick curve and quick shape just based on whatever whatever I think is the right uh, form. I do use this uh, taper setting actually a lot for this one. I found that it was a really nice way to add a little bit, because like I don't want to bevel, right? And I, I can't bevel because it's the lasso of the geometry so messed up, but I do want light to catch an edge so I found that doing some tapering um, and just having that like in a one-click solution with quick shape was really nice. I'm just checking out some camera angles here because I was going to have a Nosferatu or Count Orlock uh, like in a reflection of the cabinet or the dresser and then I realized maybe that's not the best idea because the room was a little cramped so I did another version in a second here that has like a larger room. So there's my first thumbnail. And there was my second one. And honestly, like that's enough. If you just put quick texture on there and start painting, that's already a solid sketch. But here I went and started refining it a little bit. So with refining, you know, maybe using a little bit more box instead of just lasso, just being a little more careful. I just kept drawing all those like little, um, you know, in those Victorian houses, they have all, all these little embellishments on everything. So just trying to imply that somehow. I'm doing the column. 
See, so I'm not actually ex like extruding this from one object. Like I'm just drawing a bunch of separate ones. And that's kind of, that's what Quick Tools is all about. Um, you know, you're not having to worry about proper topology and all that. And then, like I said, I'll just scale it into place and move it into place instead of having to deal with breaking the creative process because I'm trying to design at this point. So I just want to be drawing freely. A lot of looking and thinking, all of the usual drawing stuff. So I treat the alt as kind of a way to extrude to add detail, and just again to create either I'm either creating uh, something to cast a shadow or to catch light, and that's basically how I'm thinking about it. doing some random design and then mirroring it quick to form. And it's tough because you do like one shot and maybe in, in this shot I only used mirror from quick to form. You know, I didn't do a whole lot of remeshing, but then another shot, maybe I'm doing a ton of uh, remeshing and sculpting. It just really depends on the, the thing that I'm doing. But luckily there's all there's so many tools that you can you know you can always find some way to to get the job done i think so here i'm back to using the taper Adding random stuff using quick shape, trying to find a design. So this process really just feels like drawing. Just trying to check it out, see how it looks. I had some mirror issue here for some reason, so I just fixed that. Now I'm redoing the back part. So you can start getting some really, uh, like the appearance of a very detailed piece of geometry when, when you do a lot of the cutting and insetting with all and um, drawing new shapes on top of it. It starts looking a lot more detailed than it really is because you get all of those layers. like so many different ways to approach this um, it's just one way that I tried it's really not meant to be like a tutorial you know I don't want to really be like a step-by-step -step tutorial person um, I feel like there's much better people to do that 
but I just at least want to show uh, all of the tools and like how you may use them and then you guys will take it from there but I think it's actually starting to come together here I think I'm getting close to the point where I switch over to Quick Curve to add some of the more final details. Oh, here I remesh so I can use the displacement on Quick Assembly just to get a like, the what do you call that the fabric type of look. I have a texture here. It's a really nice shortcut to be able to set up a triplanar displacement like that through quick assembly. So here I created a little custom profile. Uh, you, you can see how to do that in the quick curve tutorial that I did. And then this is what I use for detailing. The custom profile on Quick Curve is a really, really powerful feature. And just the fact that you can switch back and forth from you know, going to square, going to circle, and changing the size, and then going back to a custom profile, um, just can't do it without it. So I think this is a nice way, again, catch some highlights, add some, some of that random Victorian stuff that I was looking for. And I just added those little things all over the place. And I think you could, you know, just as easily just take a little bit more time, design a more, uh, j just design a couple different profiles, find the one you like, and then just really carefully draw, to find like some actual ornamental references, make it less random. But it's just a matter of uh, how much time you want to spend on it. The technique is basically the exact same. It's nice too if you have a object like this in your scene, but then right next to it you have some nice uh, like photo scan thing that you got from somewhere. Just adds that like Craig Mullins-y, like something's really finished and then something next to it is really painterly. I really like that. So this one's almost coming to a close. So here's the final bed frame. Um, again, you can really just do any type of object with this. This is just the thing that I chose here, but this techniques will be the same. And the level of finish is really just how much time you spend on it. That's from the camera angle. Okay, so now the photo modeling workflow. Uh, all you have to do is press Control T and bring in a image as a quick texture. So it's very important that you don't make this image yourself. Use quick texture with nothing selected and now you'll have this image and as long as you go into quick shape or quick curve go to the control d menu turn on materials from active and modifiers from active as long as you select the image texture your new drawing will have that same material on it so it is very easy once you just kind of get that basic idea in and you just select it uh, and now you can see you get this very interesting effect where the object already has the material on it And so this is uh, the way that I did that gun, if you guys remember from a while ago. You can just do a couple of different textures and then basically photo bash them together. That's kind of what I'm doing here with the flowers that you'll see in a second. 
mean, if you want to spend more time, you can do like the actual pedals and like model that out, but I just kept it as super blocky. So now that I have a bunch of different ones, I can just move them around and kind of duplicate and really just photo bash in 3D. It's a very interesting thing to do. And you can move it. It obviously loses the effect a little bit when you move it uh, or rotate it in 3D, but it still kind of works, just depending on the texture that you have. And then I did a little more. With quick curve, when you're doing this technique, you want to make sure that convert to poly is on. As long as it is, uh, you'll be good. And then when you apply, uh, when you apply the modifier, the quick texture modifier on your object, it will freeze the texture in place. So here I'm just doing more of that photo bashing idea. covering up some of the flowers by just like pasting the green stuff over and then I have the vase and you can cut into it to kind of design it a little bit it's a really cool workflow so I did that a couple times and I ended up with a few flowers here so here I have the final scene just doing a little walkthrough of it. There's the Count Orlock, the William Defoe sculpt that I did. I built out the scene. Just a lot of the in and out, the extrusions with alt, a lot of the taper. And then I just threw some quick textures on it. Same exact workflow as the APC video. It looks really cool when it uh, does the denoising thing. So I'm just showing that a little bit. And in Quick Texture, you have the emission controls, so the, the candles are actually like a texture that just has the emission cranked up. And with cycles, it looks pretty good. Okay, uh, that was it. Jama and I thank you for the support. I hope that was helpful. The photo modeling, a lot of people requested it. Um, and we will continue to release updates for free. Probably pause on the walkthroughs for now. Um, just try and build out the Discord community. Come by. I, I think I'm going to start running contests like once a month, um, you know, some kind of subject matter, use quick tools on it, we'll vote, winner gets like a thousand bucks or something, we'll figure it out, that, that'll be fun, um, and yeah, okay, thanks.